Okay, so our reference signal here, guys, is uh, 10 hertz and 25% uh, positive duty cycle. Um, so this is a wee bit tricky to uh, actually get all the uh, everything in frame here with any kind of detail. So you'll see a wee bit of annoying uh, camera work here. So I'm at my Hantec uh, 2C42 and um, this short video is actually show you how to use the measure and cursor function on this. Uh, I think last week or a couple of days ago I done a video on uh, the Hantec 1008 and how do you do the uh, measure and cursor function on that and it seemed uh, a lot of people seemed appreciative of it so uh, it seems like there's a need for this video and I can see especially with the cursor function on uh, on the uh, 2XX2 uh, handheld uh, hand text that the cursor function is uh, this screen is tiny okay so here here's a uh, pencil with an eraser on the end of it to give you some sense of scale here. This is a tiny scale, so how often are you going to use it? I don't know, but in a pinch you might need to use it, so it'd be nice if you know how to use both the measure and cursor function. The measure function is quite straightforward and, and offers you a lot of utility. The cursor function, well, I guess you'll have to make up your own mind. So I've got a basic uh, trace on the screen here, guys. You can see the waveform. Um, so that's just for example purposes, of course, right? So um, how do we know what the voltage is? Well, again, with the Hantex uh, approach to their display, uh, there's no voltage on the side of the graticule here, so you'll have to do the math if you choose to do so. So channel 1 is the only one on display at the moment here, guys. You can see the uh, channel marker, channel 1, and count the graticules, about 2.5 graticules, so we know the signal is about 5 volts, right? Uh, it's a 5-volt pulse. Okay, so is there any other way we could approach that? Yeah, we can use the measure function, right? Which is uh, a matter of, let me back up here, guys. We get any menu. Uh, you can see the utility menu there is uh, five pages. We want the third page into the menu and it offers us the measure and cursor options. Let's select measure. And what we do, need to do is enable it. And by doing so, whoop, enable it. And by doing so, it's going to bring up the measure parameters for us, which is minimum and maximum, and uh, the min, max, and the frequency. So here's the uh, the parameters on offer here. Uh, let me just back up a little bit here so you can see the pointer. Uh, 10 hertz, uh, that's the minimum, so it's just slightly below uh, the zero line, and around 5 volts max. The, both channels will come up on measure regardless. You can't deselect that as far as I know. So right away, that gives you a bit more information, makes the trace a bit more understandable, right? That some parameters on there that make sense. I'd like to know the frequency. I'd like to know the min max and there it is, right? Just a couple of buttons and you have that up for display. Simple, practical. Okay, so let's go back. Select the menu again and we'll go into measure. And we'll disable it just so we can clean up the display a bit more here, right? So again, let's get any measure, utility, uh, sorry, menu. Uh, the utilities page, page three of five. Again, we want the cursor in this particular instance just for the sake of demonstrating that. We have two options here with respect to the, uh, the cursor. Again, cursor. And you see here it says cursor page. This is the submenu, if you will, and there's two pages to that, right? So we have the ability to enable it. We have type. Well, let's look at the type. We can see either voltage or time. So we can measure basically the amplitude of the signal, or we can look at a time base. We can take some time measurements on the time base with some degree of accuracy and your respective channel that you're interested in, right? So <clears throat> Um, and if you select it without enabling it, you just get um, question marks across on cursor one and cursor two. So let's enable it. We're in the time domain here. Let's swap that for volts. And uh, what you can do is uh, when it's selected on, go to the second page of the submenu, let's call it, and you can select your respective cursor. So let's go cursor one, and it gives you your value. 
So let me take you in tight on the screen here, guys, because this is a tiny screen, and the cursors that are displayed are quite faint and difficult to see. You haven't got chance in hell of seeing this in daylight conditions, I can assure you. So there's cursor one. Get you in a bit. The camera is actually washing it out, but it's not quite as bad as the camera is showing it, guys. And cursor two is down there. You can see it between the pulse. So let me just adjust it. <clears throat> Sorry, I need to get back in in the mode cursor. And okay, so it's enabled now. So I can measure, I can adjust cursor one, and it's given as the value there. You can see the line coming down. Cursor one on the far left, bottom left of the display there, guys. And I can go to cursor two, and I can set that to wherever I wanna set that to. So basically, you're looking at absolute values and differential. So that, that is the, that's what the increment is actually referring to. I guess if you take it off the zero line, you can see that that what you have is absolute values where the cursors are and the differential. So on the zero line, of course, uh, those two are gonna read the same. That makes sense. That, so that does make sense. So let's go to, <clears throat> back to page one. Uh, we'll go type, we'll go in time mode this time. And page two gives us the cursors. Let's go cursor one. Uh, you can see here, guys, I think you can see uh, I've got my, trigger uh, actually set up with respect to uh, amplitude and the uh, uh, time base those are the reference markers there so everything is based from there so let's go again cursors time and uh, so again increments this time are in the, are in um, time of course milliseconds in this instance let's uh, move cursor one so let's go right to where the start is. You can notice that flip to microseconds there, guys. So that's 800, that's zero, uh, zero milliseconds. So we're on the zero line with respect to the reference. So now we can go to cursor two. And by the way, just so you know, I'm, I'm using the, uh, the arrows with respect to actually moving it and left or right the cursor. <clears throat> Again, sorry about the pain in the ass, but there's no other way I can show it to you guys with any kind of definition here on the screen because it's such a tiny screen. Uh, cursor two, and I can move that to wherever we want it. So again, um, the absolute value from the reference and your, your value, um, this is 100 milliseconds in time from uh, the reference point. Again, these two are reading the same because our first one is on the, on the zero point, so that is the differential, it's the same. And uh, in this instance, uh, I think if, um, oops, sorry, finger trouble, uh, 100 milliseconds, if you convert it to frequency, of course, it is um, 10 hertz. Okay, so uh, yeah, you can uh, take that for what it's worth, guys. Um, you can use them both at the same time, but again, if this place starts to get a wee bit crowded for my liking. Uh, but certainly the measure function is uh, quite practical. Uh, the cursor's a wee bit difficult to see, um, but uh, still it might be usable in some uh, some uh, instances, right? So that's it. I'll, uh, I'll leave it at that, boys. I hope that made some sense. Um, Quite handy. Uh, certainly, uh, it's tough to tough tough to beat. <laughs> Easy for you, you see. Uh, tough to beat uh, with respect to its portability. This little handheld rig, uh, but it does have its limitations because of the again the, the screen is tiny, right? Uh, but I'll leave it at that, boys. I hope that was of uh, some help to you. The cursor function, wee bit tricky to use. Not not good rocket science. Poke around until you can figure it out, but um, maybe not exactly intuitive either. Right, that's it boys, cheers.